Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Suzerain Kingdom of Rizzi Edition where things are going okay but I don't know what the next steps are and I'm worried. We've got a meeting with Uncle Hugo which I don't think me and Hugo have been on best terms recently after I keep on demeaning his son and saying he's a bad leader. My shoes echoed on stone as I walked down the palace corridor to Hugo's study. My uncle had invited me for a one-on-one -on -one talk and though I had plenty on my mind, I could hardly decline. Titus remained on guard outside as I pushed open the door and stepped inside. I cast my eye over the filled greed mahogany desk, the antique cabinets and the tasteful paintings and sculptures lining the walls. A fire flickered in the fireplace. Two other armchairs had been set out in front of it, one empty, the other occupied by Hugo. My uncle rose and bowed upon my approach. Your Majesty, thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, it's just the two of us who can talk to me as an equal. As you prefer, Romus. He beckoned me over and we both sat. Tell me, nephew, how much thought have you given to the future of House Taurus? Um, the king's legacy should be determined by his words and deeds, not his lineage. But how will his words and deeds live on with a name to remember him by? Our family roots can be traced all the way back to the Resident Empire, we have survived war, conquest, and numerous changes to the throne to be where we are today. He picked up a poker and jostled the logs in the fireplace. A shower of sparks flew upwards. I brought you here to give you a warning. Certain members of our house have begun to speak ill of you. Certain members, are you one of them? I myself would never say a word against you, but some of your decisions have admittedly vexed me. I had no idea I had angered our house that much, thank you for telling me. I wouldn't be a very effective advisor if I didn't tell you. I'm loath to remind you, but there are those in House Taurus who believe my brother, and hence you, should have been removed from the royal line of succession after introducing commoner blood. Your actions as king have unfortunately poured fuel on these flames. Uh, what do you suggest I do? I can't backtrack on my decisions. But you can make wise ones in the future. I have not even mentioned our house's gravest concern, Manus Sazen. He spoke the name like a curse word. I am certain you have good intentions and I am the Sazen heir to court Vina, but I will tell you this. If you permit Her Highness to marry this man, your grip on the throne will weaken to the point where I cannot recover it. He's not just the Sazen heir, he's the House of Delegates opposition. Surely marrying him to Vina will, neutral will help neutralise him. Or turn him even to, into even more of a danger. You don't. You, you needn't allow your reign to be undone by a pair of starry-eyed youths. There are actions that can be taken. Hmm. Actions. That sounds like a use, euphemism if, if ever I heard one. You're right. I should speak to you as an adult. He is an ambitious young man. There must be something he wants more than the princess. And if the cow doesn't work, there is always the stick. I like carrots, they're full of vitamins. <laughs> Let's go with that one. By all means, make him an offer. However, this doesn't solve the problem with whom the princess should wed. I'm not marrying her to Rico, she hates him. Uh, you got enough to worry about, I'll handle it. Of course, Your Majesty. I should stop harping on about this, I know you and the princess will make the right decision. Uh, you're my grand vizier, my uncle, your advice is always valuable to me. We rose to my chairs. The fire began to flicker out as Hugo ushered me out the door. Titus shadowed me down the hall as I made my way back towards my quarters. On the way there, we passed my study door. Um, let's talk to Titus privately. Certainly, your majesty. Titus and I entered the study and shut the door behind us. How are you? I'm well, Your Majesty. I apologise that the investigation into your father's death has taken such a long time. The fate of zeal has been weighing on my mind, as I'm sure it has yours. Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> you bear an unimaginable amount of responsibility, and I do not envy you. Was that all you wanted to ask me? Um, I don't need... Yeah, I'm not I'm not dealing with Mena Sazen. That I'm not getting him assassinated. That feels bad, and I feel like Vina would never forgive me. 
and given that my wife has died, I you know I need all the support of the family that I can get. Really, you may escort me back to my chambers with pleasure. Titus and I left the study and walked back to my chambers. My guard wished me good night before taking up his usual post outside my door. As I climbed into bed, I thought about a conversation with my uncle. Who would carry on my name, and what would my legacy be? Hmm, interesting. Okay, we've got a pardon over there, or... The anniversary of the Easy University. Let's go to this pardon thing first. So first we've got a report. Anti-intervention protest in Monkeys Harbour. A group of anti-war activists attempted to block the ships, carrying military aid for Vendom... Uh, Vendonis... Oh, I can never say this name. Vendonism from leaving the port. Their attempt was unsuccessful, with law enforcement swiftly arresting the troublemakers. And a pardon. As King of Rizia, you have the chance to pardon certain political prisoners. The citizens have once again pointed to their long-standing petition, asking for the release of their matriarch Angelica, whose husband plotted the infamous royal kidnapping in 1926. She can have a pardon. Let's, let's foster some goodwill. Um, although, me and Dadia are now hostile <laughs> relations with each other. But that's somewhat to be expected. We were never going to be... Never going to be best buds, for sure. Okay. Um, let us do the anniversary of Easy University, 750th one. Cameras flashed all around as my royal motorcade rolled up at the Easy University auditorium entrance. As King Arizia had been invited to speak at the institution's 750th anniversary. Fina had agreed to come along with May as her date. The two of them were in the car behind mine. The driver came around to open my door. I took a look out the window. A large crowd swarmed in front of the university auditorium entrance. Titus's voice came from the passenger seat. My scouts have given the all clear. That's fine to exit the car. Uh, it seems like we're getting a warmer welcome than last time. I'm pleased that law enforcement is doing its job. A diverse mass of people greeted me with applause as I exited the vehicle. Some are holding a large banner that uh, read, Welcome Home Angelica. Franco's police officers guarded the building doors, and they saluted me as I went inside. The seats were already full of students, staff members, distinguished alumni, and nobles from House Sazen. I think it's good that we pardoned Angelica. Many war outfits adorned with the Easy University mascot, an, anthro an anthropomorphic cactus named Spikey, and they rose and cheered enthusiastically as I proceeded down the hall. I was halfway to the stage when the all erupted into cheers. I turned my head to see Vina and Mena swaying to the crowd. Behind them was a dark-haired woman, Angelica. Or daughter. She approached me with a smile. King Romus, we meet at last. Don't just say it's a pleasure to see you here. I cries your majesty. I watch your coronation from Calcabiz. It's disgusting me to think how close my husband came to keeping you from the throne. Your husband, right. I won't pretend his words never swayed me. When I became pregnant, I realised some things are more important than revolution. Her eyes travel past me to her son. I think I should be getting to my seat. We will speak again soon. Enjoy the festivities, Duchess. Please, Your Majesty, call me Angelica. She stepped away from me and continued down the aisle. Venus split off from the front row as I took my place on stage next to Rico. He was Seated with his legs spread out, his expression radiating barely concealed disdain. I don't really don't like Rico. Uh, sit properly, Duke Ricardus. They don't respect me around here, I don't see why I should respect them. But as his majesty commands, he reluctantly assumed a more formal pose. The lights dimmed and the dean of the university stepped on stage. After a short presentation about the history of the university, she invited the Duke of Isa to speak. As Rico took the stage, I heard scornful murmurs from the audience. My cousin stepped behind the podium and cleared his throat. As reigning Duke of Isa, I am honoured to speak at the anniversary of Rizzi's most renowned university. I must confess to you all 
The only higher education I've received is from the School of Life, and I haven't even graduated yet. Nobody laughed. Rico frowned and continued. When I took ch- charge of ESA, I realised what an important role this institution plays. ESA University was founded in order to preserve our kingdom's cherished traditions and pass them on to the next generation. To instil young people like yourselves with a stable moral centre, even when one is lacking outside these walls. But somehow, over the years, that purpose was lost. The school has become a breeding ground for an ideology that prioritises foreign perspectives over our own. A place where this nation's greatest achievements are seen as problems to be worried over, not triumphs to be celebrated. And our youths are led to believe that the complex realities of today can be solved by waving signs and chanting. He left his gaze out at the audience. This isn't education, it's indoctrination. A student sitting in the front yelled, FASCIST! And Rico jerked his head in her direction. That's exactly what I mean. You can't speak the truth in this country without getting smeared with meaningless accusations. His mouth curled into a sneer. Now, if I actually were fascist, do you think I'd let this young lady make it out of this auditorium alive? The crowd erupted into fury. Their boos escalated into full throated shouts of down with the Duke. Get off the stage, Rico. You're doing stupid things. Rico opened his mouth to a talk and closed it, and he nodded his assent. The audience began cheering as he retreated from the podium. He spoke to me under his breath. You see what I'm up against? I doubt you fare much better. You brought this on yourself, cousin. You embarrassed us both. The students in the crowd burst into applause as I took Rico's place behind the podium. Still, I could feel the lingering tension in the hall. I glanced at Titus. He was scanning the crowd, alert for the slightest sign of danger, like the police outside my flat. As always, when I'm recording, they decide to come and charge out in, in force. I took out the notes I prepared. Um, my fellow Rusians. Seven hundred fifty years. What a milestone! Not only for this university, but for Rusia. Like my cousin, I believe in the power of institutions like this one to shape the next generation of Rizians. I look at you when I see the future that I want this country to have, diverse, curious, unafraid to question authority. And yes, that authority includes your own duke. He speaks of unity, yet seeks to draw arbitrary lines between us and them. Moraine is all about breaking away from the constraints of the past. It's time for Isa to do exactly that. The volume of the crowd was beginning to rise, and Rico looked agitated. His eyes started back and forth to meet the audience. Oh, I could remove him for power effective immediately. Oh, this feels like a big moment. Do I remove him from power? Or do I try to keep him on the side? Still, I ask you have to pay. I ask you to have patience. The Duke is young and has much to learn. Perhaps all of you can learn together what it means to coexist. So, in the audience yelled now, and a group of students in the middle row of seats stood up simultaneously. They removed their jackets to reveal white shirts with letters printed on them. Together, they spelled the word oppressor. Trotting rights for all, they began filing out of the auditorium. The students and teachers in other rows followed. That's right, don't underestimate the power of peaceful protest. Nobody acknowledged my remark. Rico and I watched as the auditorium gradually emptied out. Only a few people remained seated, Vino and Manus were among them. At the same time, they both rose from the chairs, turned around and left the room as well. Well, that went horrendously. And I blame the Duke for that in its entirety. So we're going to have to have some pretty strong words with him when we next have the option to do so. 
Uh, we have a meeting with Queen Livingston. The thumb of fair plane wheels on asphalt jolting me, jolting me from my sleep. I was seated in the commercial jet we chartered for a royal visit to Thornborough. It had been a long, bumpy ride. Lorenzo was in the sea next to mine. On seeing I was awake, he smiled. Good morning, Your Majesty. I'm glad you were able to get some rest. Wasn't easy, I'd been nervous about today's meeting. Understandably so. He pulled a tin of wax out of his pocket and dabbed some onto the ends of his moustache. With all the foreign turmoil happening lately, it's comforting to know the Queen Beatrice is still on our side. She'd better be able to bending over backwards to run bugs since my coronation. I'm sure Her Excellency appreciates that. The plane's door stood open and an aide informed us that everything had been cleared for our arrival. Thornborough University, one not university, Thornborough Airport, one of the biggest transportation hubs in Mercopa, had been completely emptied of passengers for our visit. As we descended the airplane stairs onto the tarmac, a horn quartet played a jubilant fanfare. Photographers in the corner of press area eagerly began snapping pictures. A red carpet stretched from the plane to a waiting motorcade. Next to a pair of limousines, Beatrice Livingston and the Romberg Royal family waited to greet us. The Queen had a compassionate look in her eyes as I approached. We exchanged tea kisses. My dear brother-in-law, what a pleasure it is to finally host you in Thornborough. Uh, your niece sends her warmest wishes. How lovely, a pity she could not be here. She abruptly turned and regarded Lorento, who was standing behind me. Mr Escabel, His Majesty is lucky to have retained the services of a fine statesman like yourself. The good fortune is all mine. With a flourish, she knelt and kissed Beatrice's hand. She blushed, sl blushed slightly. Let's not delay. We have a full programme of events planned at the Emerald Palace. Oh, you remember King Consort Boris and Prince Bradley? Lorenzo and I exchanged cursory greetings with the two men. A chauffeur opened their limousine door and they stepped in. Queen Beatrice, Lorenzo and I were escorted over to a second car. I hope you two don't mind the company. We have so much to catch up on. I thought we should start right away. Uh, good thinking. You never know who's listening in the palace. I assure you our security is second to none, but of course one can never be too careful. We got into the car and sat facing each other on leather banquets. The engines went to life and we began moving. Once we were in motion, Beatrice smiled at the two of us. Well, look at us. Still allies after all these years. Your business-friendly policies have helped our nations greatly. I know it's not smooth sailing for any of us monarchies, but I trust you know what you're doing. As long as we have Ron Brooks and continued support, we shall not falter. You will. Fear not. I admit I was somewhat disappointed when Rizzi lost access to the Aureus gas field. We have other energy sources to fall back on, also Miss Werner telling us, tells us. I do hope they're stable. I won't want to have to go back into Sordland in case of an energy crisis. I understand you've been having some trouble with the Republic lately. Sordland has trouble with us, Mr Escobar, not the other way around. It's true we closed our embassy in Lackhaven, but that was a long overdue response to the Republic's many attempts to isolate us. And then their president, Rain, had the nerve to condemn us. Ah, Anton Rain. <laughs> in my playthrough, he had a hat. I mean, I like hats. Lorenzo looked distressed. He nodded to Beatrice to continue. Frankly, Your Majesty, the fact that Rizzi is maintaining its connections to Sordon amounts to betrayal in my eyes. I'm not a, f a fan of President Rain either, but I got to honour the deals I made with his predecessor. I respect that you're a man of your word, but I fear that Swordish President is not. It may not appear so at the moment, but Rain is almost certainly up to something. He will stab both our kingdoms in the back with no hesitation, mark my words. We rode on. I looked out the window to completely empty freeway. Um, how would you feel about the Grand Duchess Palace joining Grace? She looked at me in surprise. Why, I'm always happy to add more members to our exclusive club. As long as they're not too closely m m meshed with ATO, that is. Uh, I can throw the Duke away from... Hmm... 
If Rumble can get good gas prices out of the bargain, does it matter? No, I suppose not. I have not yet broached the subject of zeal. We should be getting the region back soon, assuming we stick to the terms of my agreement with Victor Smolak. In case that deal doesn't work out, I have another opportunity for you. She leaned forward and spoke confidentially. I suggest that you take advantage of Rumberg's contacts with the Buddhist Freedom Front. Those the terrorists. The persecuted minority fighting an impressive government. And the struggle can conveniently be channeled towards Zeal. Lauren took off. If I may, Your Excellency, Zeal has nothing to do with the Greater Bludia region. Why would the BFF get involved there? Any action that destabilizes the Smolnak regime will have the Bludish cause, no matter where it is carried out. Lorento pondered over this for a moment. I am loath to suggest violence as a solution to the Zeal conundrum, especially since Werden may yet return to the region through diplomatic means. If we found the BFF and Smolnak found out about it, he'd have an excuse to hold on to Zeal forever. And who would tell him? Do you run that leaky? Do you run that leaky of a ship, Your Majesty? Um, no, I'm not using the BFF. That's a slippery slope. Suit so yourself, Your Majesty. It was just a suggestion. At any rate, Your Excellency, thank you for this offer and for entrusting us, us entrusting us with such sensitive information. Why, certainly. That's what allies are for. Now, is there anything else on your mind? Now, what happens if you, um, how is it imp how important is it to you that Rizzi stay a member of Grace? She frowned. My dear, no nation is an island. You may be drawing closer to your neighbours, but do they understand the unique pressures a monarch is under? Will they offer you economic protection in times of hardship? Uh, I was only asking a hypothetical question. Beatrice sniffed. I do hope you're satisfied, satisfied with the answer. We turned off the freeway. The massive green domes of the Emerald Palace loomed in the distance. We finished the journey in comfortable silence. There was still a long visit ahead of us. Okay, what's happening? And we have Duke Reinhardt's visit. This is going to go well. As the morning sun casts its golden rays over the opulent halls of the palace, I waited for Duke Reinhardt to arrive. The meeting, set against the backdrop of the recent Aureus gas field agreement, was crucial in solidifying our newfound cooperation. I paced the grand reception hall, looking at the walls, the door, the tapestries depicting the glorious history of Rizia, while Pavel was making sure everything was in order. I stopped in front of one massive tapestry map dated 7th century, which showed the resident empire at the height of its power. The borders stretched far and wide, including most of the current territories of current day Morella, Derdia, Werden, and the southern coast of Lesbia. What are you thinking, Romus? About the map, I mean. Uh, do you think it's too aggressive hanging this in the reception hall? I'm not so sure about that. Few threads still link the ancient resident empire and modern day Rizia. However, he pointed at one map hung in the corner of the hall. Don't you think that this particular map might be perceived a bit negatively? It was a very rare map depicting the borders of the kingdom in the 18th century, showing Palace as part of Rizia. Uh, you're right, the Duke may take it the wrong way, bring it down. Pavel took the map down from the wall, and suddenly we heard a knock on the door, signalling the arrival of the Duke. I'll leave you to it, Your Majesty. Uh, see you soon. Before I had time to recollect myself, the door suddenly opened. Duke Reinhardt strode into the hall, glancing round at the paintings and tapestries on the wall. He approached me and we shook hands. Uh, it's great to see you here, Duke Reinhardt. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Yes, thank you. It's great to finally be here, Your Majesty. He smiled and gestured at the two armchairs. Please. We both sat down. So, Your Majesty, I hope you've been faring well since we last met. I must say the resolution of Aureus has been a game changer for us. I've been reading the reports. Best Power has already begun the extractions and our pipeline construction is almost complete. Aureus gas will be able to be supplied to Rizia soon enough. I'm looking forward to talk to you about the details. That's great news, Rizia looks forward to receiving your Polesian gas. Yes, we can begin as soon as the pipeline is complete. 
Look, Your Majesty, I believe this resolution we reached is more than just handshakes or numbers. In light of this, I've been completing the future, you know, our next steps. I agree wholeheartedly that resolution was a sign of deeper understanding between our countries. We can't stop there. I like how you think. We've been circling around it for years, Your Majesty, but I don't want Pallas to be a chessboard for Lesbia nor Rizia. However, I also believe Rizia and Pallas are natural partners. Our countries are politically and culturally the closest in southern Mercopa, maybe even the whole world. And now that Rizia has gained our trust, it might be possible to reconsider certain agreements with Lesbia, provided that there is an alternative offer from our new partners. He looked as if he was going to say something, but stopped himself. Well, before I get there, I have to relay you some news. Your Majesty, we are very excited to be able to supply Rizia with its energy needs. For the selfless attitude you've shown us, we took it upon ourselves to build the necessary infrastructure as a token of gratitude. Soon Power Stream will be able to transfer tons of your demands. Uh, let's talk details. As soon as the Palace Stream starts pumping out gas from Aurea, Aureus, it will be relatively cheaper to transport it to Rizia. Having said that, Rizia will be paying 12.50 Arcasian Liras per 1000 cubic metres. Two budget for turn for one energy per turn. That is not worth it. No, guys, so they're not pulled back raising claims, so they're still not going to pay more than the average price. What am I to do? This is the price defined by less power, Your Majesty, and they're handling all the logistics as you know. There's nothing I can do about that now. I don't really want to anger him, but it's not really, it's really not worth it for one additional budget per turn. You can still let go of your deal with them, you don't need to allow them to any longer. So Rizzi is willing to take on all our contracts with them. Um, Be reasonable, Your Grace. Of course, we cannot provide everything Lesbia offers, but we can offer other things. I saw a glint in his eye. I've already told you about what I think of them, but Lesbia provides us with protection, technology, and the know how about kickstarting our own energy industries. If Rizzi had stepped us before Lesbia bought the rights, neither this neither of us would have been in this situation. He sighed. Unfortunately, for the time being, you have to directly deal with Lesbia for the energy prices. Unless Rizzi can provide an alternative to Lesbia, you cannot steer us away from them. Uh, what do you have in mind? What of grace, Your Majesty? Drifting away from Nespia would necessitate strong allies with common goals. Rizzi is a key member. Have you extend considered extending an invitation our way? I want to see Palaz as part of Grace. Someone keeps must stand together. Oh, I'm stoked to hear you agree. So can I expect you to extend this invitation at the next Grace meeting? Uh, what's in it for us if we put in a good word with Queen Beatrice? Are you serious, Your Majesty? No, let's not anger him. Of course not. Relax, Axel. I will send you an application. He narrowed his eyes. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'll be looking forward to the result of the vote. There's one more thing. Don't you think Rizzi and Palace deserve a more intimate connection? <laughs> Sorry, Axel, you're not my type. Uh, intimate, what are you suggesting? I have admired Princess Vina for some time now. She's got the spirit of Rizzi in her, and the marriage between us could be, well, something special. I mean, think about it. What better way to unite our lands than through family? Uh, my daughter is already spoken for currently, Your Grace. Interesting, I don't see a ring on her finger. This union will not only be a powerful symbol of reconciliation between our families, but emerging in my country's destinies. I do not wish to discuss this further without my daughter's full consent. This is her decision to make, not mine. Absolutely, but if Her Highness is, a, is as intelligent as she seems, she won't refuse the chance to make history. 
nor the opportunity to be married to this. He gestured to his own smiling face. Look, your majesty, my intention is not to execute a power grab. If your daughter does take the throne one day, I'm going to be the king consort. She can keep the Taurus surname if you and she desire. Just think about it. I'll bring it up with my daughter, but if she says no, that's the end of the conversation. That goes without saying, thank you. Was there anything else you'd like to discuss? Um, I have something to offer you. I believe we can do more than just grace. I don't know where this is leading, but we'll offer it. I'm all ears. It's time we stand together. I'm offering you a military alliance. Rizia can give you the protection you require. You're not desperate anymore. Or I envision a grander alliance that encompasses our neighbours in southern Macopa. Um, let's do the second one. I envision a grander alliance that encompasses our neighbours in southern Macopa. We have to protect this neighbour from encroaching world powers. If you and I work together, we can achieve this. An intriguing proposal. What would this new alliance look like? There's no way we can get dirtier on side. Morella, maybe, Whalen, potentially, Bales, Rizia. It's possible. A South Mokopan alliance with the aim of defensive and economic cooperation. I don't see any South Mokopan nations coming together anytime soon. How are you planning to do that? Especially considering Wed and Moretta's connections to the CSP. The power will go beyond ideologies or state governance. If every one of us is tied to each other economically, this will only foster growth and peace. I don't know if I want to bet it on the success of a dream, Your Majesty. I can't promise you anything. Uh, I understand. So, is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Uh, Oh, Grace, thank you. Great, then we can call it for today. He stood up and shook my hand. Thanks for having me, Your Majesty. It was really nice, as always, talking to you. Until next time. Hmm. Okay, unrest over unfulfilled welfare promises. The broken promises regarding improved welfare services had led to significant protests near the capital of Bronaz. The crowd frustrated by Ahmed assurances of better health and education funding demand immediate action from the crown. This situation poses critical challenge to the monarchy's credibility. It will contain the protests with normal police, not with riot police. That feels like a bad idea. It does give us some authority. How is our relationship with Palais? It's allied and they're strong. Good. It feels like that's going well. We also have dinner with the family. I'm intrigued to have a look at some more royal decrees, if there's any we can now enact. I mean, with only one authority, it's not gonna, we're not going to be able to do too much, I don't think. Especially with only one budget. But we do have five energy. I don't know where that one budget went, because I think we had two before. Uh, it might be from more of that energy-related stuff. Uh, okay, dinner with the family. Golden candlesticks stood along the length of the table in the royal dining room. Their flickering light cast a warm glow on my daughter's face, matching the warmth in her eyes. My mother hurried into the room, holding the train of her silk brocade gown, and Pebble calmly pulled out her chair. Truly sorry, dears, it took two ladies in waiting to squeeze me into this old thing. But I wouldn't miss supper for the world. It's been ages since the three of us sat around the same table. One must make time for family. The same goes for princesses. Pardon my interruption, but dinner is served. Pavel rang a small bell. An army of kitchen staff materialised around the table, bearing plates of food. He fastidiously wiped the dust off an ancient-looking wine bottle, before pouring glasses for Vina, my mother, and me. A rare Quantuavo Grand Cru, bottled in 1926, days prior to the uprising. I bet it's aged more gracefully than I have. The others laughed politely. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but even heavier are the under-eye bags. Pavel bowed and disappeared back into the kitchen. I looked down at my plate. Dinner tonight was monkey's lobster with rice and plenty of butter. Your father couldn't stand lobster as a child, Vina. I couldn't get him to eat it by telling him it was a magical creature called a sea pheasant. Wait, there's no such thing as a sea pheasant. My mother snickered and Vina didn't respond. 
Uh, anything on your mind, Vina? You know you can tell me anything. Nothing? Oh well. I had a long conversation with Manus the other day. The topic of marriage came up. Is that so? How lovely. She breathed a sigh of relief. Lovely indeed. So does that mean we can go through with it? Before I agree, there is another marriage opportunity that we must discuss. What to whom? Definitely not to Ricardo Taurus. I'm going to say Axel Reinhardt, and I know what the answer is going to be, but I'll at least bring it up. Vina pushed her away her plate with a stunned expression. Oh honey, don't look so surprised. Uh, I suppose you have objections. I object to you and the Duke of Palace discussing this without my involvement. As to the marriage itself, it's handsome to be sure, but I'm not in love with him. Things do not factor into this equation, you have a chance to make history. Unifying kingdoms through a loveless marriage. Yes, that sounds like history to me. Vina. An arranged marriage can turn into genuine affection just as easily as so-called true love can curdle into resentment. I speak, of course, from experience. That may be so, but what about the Reinhards? Do we really want to merge our house with theirs? I've been privy to your conversations about them. Will one marriage be enough to resolve centuries of tension? This your generosity in the handling of the Aureus Gasfield affair. I have faith that they will be uh, reliable partners. I still don't know. As much as I've enjoyed being in your council, I still believe our kingdom citizens should have more of a say in its future. I thought that's what you wanted as well. A marital alliance with another monarchy feels like a step backwards to me. I still have every intention of being changed to Rizia. Our chances of success will be much higher with wealth and the support of Palace behind us. If I marry Reinhardt, I intend to hold you to that promise. My mother was smiling proudly. Joining the Royal Council really has agreed with you, hasn't it? I used to be so jealous of noble women like you. They come into my establishment, spinning like tycoons and talking like encyclopedias. When I joined your ranks, I realised the price of all that privilege. Sooner or later, you've got to put your personal aspirations aside and do your womanly duty on behalf of the kingdom. No wonder that's not going to be Vina's life. My daughter's free to choose her own future. Vina paused, suddenly uncertain. Marrying Duke Reinhardt is what's best for Rizia, isn't it? Oh dear. Reinhardt or Sazen? I want what's best for you. She took a deep breath. Oh my goodness, she'll do it. I'll do it, Father. I agree to wed to the Duke of Palace. I just need to figure out what to say to Manus. Manus. I'm sure he'll understand. You can always keep seeing him on the side after all. Absolutely not. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Pabob, some champagne, we've got to an engagement to celebrate. Right away, madam. He absconded to the kitchen and returned with a bottle. Uh, Pour yourself a glass, Pebble, it's a special occasion. Pebble briskly shook his head. It's a very expensive vintage, not to be wasted on butlers. He smelled our glasses and Vina hoisted hers high. The hint of a smile was being to show on her face. To reunited Rizia, perhaps this will be fun after all. I still have your mother's ring, I want you to wear it at the wedding. Oh father, it would be an honour. We cleaned our glasses. Over dessert we began discussing the wedding preparations. I was not expecting that. I, I, I gave her free choice. You know, if she didn't want to, that was okay. I'm not sure how the how that's going to play out in the long term though with Mena Sazen. But maybe it'll be okay, I don't really know. Ensuring continuity of the Taurus Royal Lineage. The future of the Taurus Royal Lineage is at crossroads. With the Crown Princess's forthcoming marriage. Tradition dictates that she and any children she may bear takes her husband's surname, effectively removing House Taurus from the royal line of succession. However, the King and Rizzi may issue an exception allowing the Taurus name to be passed down matrilineally. 
Um, the tourist surname and lineage will carry on through Vina, which Duke Reinhardt has already agreed to, so I don't think that should be a problem. Right, is there anything we can do in terms of royal orders before the end of the turn? I don't think so, but we should have a lot of stuff going forward, so we will continue. Chapter 3, Leviathan. In the original game there were four chapters, so this might well... We might well see how th this goes. It could take longer, it could take shorter, we just don't know. Um, but we will leave things there and pick up all of this next time. Ooh, I do want to have, however, see this. A civil war in Vedema's son ev evolved into a prolonged stalemate where neither side could clinch a decisive victory. Kanthapur remained under monarchist control, while the other region, region continued its resilient stand, despite the ebb and flow of resin support. Drona battles of Radkara and Penguvi became symbols of the enduring impasse, with each side gaining and losing ground in a seemingly endless cycle. In Tamarin, the Dreadlock played out fiercely, Deadlock not Dreadlock even, with constant skirmishes and strategic maneuvers yielding little change in the control. The nation divided and more weary yearned for resolution, but as days turned into months and months into years, the conflict became a part of daily life with no clear end in sight. I'm definitely not losing my authority or my budget, so we're ignoring the lost cause. Okay. And the rest we will continue with next time. Thank you so much for watching. I did not expect Vina to go the way she did, so I don't know what the consequences of that will be going forward. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.